Sports, then I am your girl. Sit down on the couch if you're not on the field. Cold on the ice, pick any sport that you want. Know that I cover it tight. What would you like from baseball to football and more? Then this can go on the whole night. Big shouts out to my HBCU fam. Never forget who I am through the wins and the losses, the highs and the lows. We gotta stay strong, so I stay ten toes. Make the competition back, back. The way I kick it, make them mad, man. See, all that we live and die, wreck. Sit back on the couch and relax. Come on. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch. This is your Washington football team update, and I am your host, C. Wall. It is so good to be with you all yet again to discuss the Washington football team and what happened this week during week six of the 2021 NFL season. I just know that you all could not wait to log in and talk all about the week six happenings with the Washington football team. I just know you all couldn't wait. I see you all already logging in. I see DJ and Damon and Daniel and Daryl all the fans that names start with D's. I see Eugene. I see Cameron. Of course, the Seawall team has checked in. Joy is here, always here to facilitate the conversation. And I already see the comments coming in. Damon, you couldn't wait? That's what's up. So again, you guys, welcome to another edition of the Washington Football Update. Do I even need to ask this question here that's scrolling down at the bottom of the screen? Wanted to know if the Washington football fans are here. Do I need to ask that question? Is everybody checked in? Has everybody checked in with your like and love emoji? Have you shared the show with your Washington football team loving family and friends? Is it safe? to even say loving at this point. Is it okay to say loving? You guys, as always, we have a lot to discuss. Absolutely see you all checking in. Let's get right to it because it's always so very much. Now, here's something that we normally say right, on the DC Sports Edition, but isn't it applicable? Isn't it applicable for the Washington football team? When is there a dull moment? It's DC Sports, but really never with the Washington football team. So let's hop right to it. Let's get it on in, starting with the game that we like to play when we are recapping the previous week, and that is, what's your one word? What's your one word, everybody? That means, what is your one word that describes how you felt after the week six loss to the Kansas City Chiefs? So let's just go, let's get it rolling. Pathetic. Lost. Sick. Those are some words that can absolutely describe um, how one might have felt after that week six loss to the Kansas City Chiefs for certain. I can say I absolutely thought... Um, 
the game would be like a tale of two not so good, very bad defenses. I was under the assumption that the game could potentially be high scoring for both because both Washington football and Kansas City are not all that great on the defensive side of, of the ball there. But um, hey, the Washington football team was actually not so good, very bad in just about all instances. If I must say so myself. So let's start with First things first, let's just let's get on into the Sean Taylor tribute. So let me say this. Did everybody get a chance to see the Sean Taylor tribute video that was shared throughout the stadium week six? Couple of things before I share the video. The weather was beautiful, and I absolutely felt like this could be a good day. Um, it was so interesting because I'm a huge Sean Taylor fan, humongous, huge Sean Taylor fan. And it was a bit surreal walking into work because I always envisioned if I, you know, if ever they did a dedication to Sean, I would be like hanging out. Um, but instead, you know, as, as as God would have it, I was working, which was still special. And it was still um, a, a, a beautiful moment for me. But I absolutely was starting to anticipate what could this, this really be about? What could this really be about? So if you did not get a chance to see the tribute video, I was going to go through a, a whole, a, a, a lot, but I do want to share the tribute video. Check this out. When I think of Sean Taylor, I just say, what if? I really would like to have seen what could he have made out of that career. I think about being the best. I try to be the best every day I step out on the field. I dealt with a lot of losses in life, you know, as far as family members. And I don't know why he has meant a lot more to me than anybody else. I think everybody knew he was gifted. They knew he was a great uh, team guy. He was somebody to be reckoned with. We got a chance to see him really enjoy this life that we live. But there'll never be another Sean Taylor. So in anticipation, the video played in the stadium. And, you know, because, because of my admiration for Sean Taylor, and I'm sure many of you felt the same Yes, I was over. I was a bit overwhelmed with emotion, but you know, hey, your girl got to keep it together. But a few of us in the media talked about what the moment meant for, you know, meant for all of us. You know, I was able to chat with some of my colleagues that covered Sean Taylor. And at the time, you know, you're on the fan side of the spectrum. But for those that actually covered Sean, built a relationship with Sean. They really went through that with the organization, with that loss and with their whole entire community. So it was tough. But the minute the, 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 the video was about a minute, you know, 20 seconds or so. OK. Um, what did mean something um, and really pulled on my heartstrings specifically was seeing how emotional his daughter was. Um, that meant a lot. She she was definitely overwhelmed with emotion. And that, that'll pull at your heartstrings a bit. But then you look around 
and see and you want to believe the organization when they share and they say that this had been planned for months. But in real life, whether you were home or in the building, it did not appear to be something that had been effectively planned for months. Did not have that feel at all, um, which is disappointing for everybody. So I don't know, but what I do know is that it could have been a lot better. Even from an alumni weekend perspective, the entire experience could have meant a lot more. I'm sure by now everyone saw Patrick Mahomes' little brother Jackson dancing all on the 21 on, on the field. That was one of the first things that most of us noticed, just the location of the 21. Why is why is the 21 over on the opposing side of the field? Why is the opposing team running out of the tunnel while the tribute video is playing. So from just an execution perspective, it was bad. It was bad. Optics all wrong. So hey y'all, it's I don't I, I I don't really know what to say other than that. Um I already see you know Wallace your comment here about there's no way they spent months planning what we got, it definitely uh, appeared that way for certain, um, being there live. Um, so I don't know where, where, where things leave the team. It doesn't help that the team played in the manner in which the team played in week six. So let's start it might be the easiest topic to cover, um, at least for me at this moment. <laughs> um, let's talk about special teams. That's the easiest one to get past and to just discuss. Listen, just when you thought you could say, you know what, Dustin Hopkins might be okay. He made Two field goals, I think one from 50, one from 43, and then he missed one. That, you know, it's always nice to try to get all the points that you can, but hey. Nonetheless, Washington throughout the week has been going to be working out a group of kickers. So well, have to absolutely see how that works out. How, how that they had two kickers on their practice squad. They released both of them. Let's see what happens. We're going to keep on keeping on with what the great Rich Chandler, may he rest in peace, share with us. Don't listen to what they don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. So here comes another group of kickers coming in. So that remains to be seen on how that all transpires. Here's the interesting thing. From a field goal perspective, it's not like Dustin Hopkins has missed a lot. But why does it feel like it? He has. That's what I can't figure out. Why does it feel so bad and so off? I don't know. It was truly disappointing to see the product on the field yesterday. Now, of course, it get, you get hype. You know, you see, you know, DeAndre Carter, he walking in with, you know, his Sean Taylor jersey on. You know, everybody knows Chase Young had his, you know, his helmet, his face mask all taped up. You know, you get all the good feels. You get all the great energy. I saw Landon Collins walk up to Sean Taylor's daughter and introduce himself. And they communicated and they chatted and embraced and took a pic, you know, quite a few photo ops together with them in that moment. So I'm like, ooh. Landon, today is your day. It is your moment, my friend. Mm -mm. It didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way at all. So what we're going to do now is pull up a few of, of the excerpts from Ron Rivera's day after the game press conference, because I think they're important. I think they're important. And of course, we can try to get through every single thing, but we only got like 28, 29 and a half minutes. But let's try to get through some of, of this conversation, because from an offense perspective, we absolutely know that 
the off you know, offense they did not score nearly enough. Because here's the thing: yes, even on Patrick Mahomes' worst day, even when he's throwing picks, he can score 30. He can still get the get the football in the end zone to, to, to his guys. And that's exactly what transpired and what happened. Defense. Somehow, some way, even with five first rounders, the defense allowed like 500 yards, y'all. 500 of them. That's not good. Gotta figure out what's going on. So let's dig in to one of the first excerpts that I wanted to share from Ron Rivera's Monday press conference. See things like missed tackles or guys not getting lined up, things that seem more fundamental. What do you attribute that to, and, and how do you guys go about fixing that? Well, I think it's a little bit of lack of discipline, which I said last night falls on me. Um, again, that's something that if if I have to approach it differently, then I will, and, and that's something that's important. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Yes. So. Ron absolutely shared in the after game presser immediately after the game, he seemed to be very, very much aligned with this is on me. This is on me. Heard a lot of that. Um, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's what you want to hear where the coach is now taking accountability for that because it was bad. Especially when, here's the thing, you're going into the half actually leading. Now, we were all discussing in the press room, hey, man, everybody knows Patrick Mahomes is one of the princes and kings of resilience. He going to make up for those mistakes. He's going to make up for them. He still might make a couple more, but he's going to get to, he. He can course correct and it not take that much on a team like the Washington football team, unfortunately. So absolutely seeing the comments here, right. Ron is saying what we've all been saying for weeks, change the approach. Now there's much to be said about, again, players, and ex, you know, coaching, execution they have to come together they have to come together but this is yesterday it was like okay everybody ring the alarm ring the alarm now absolutely want to share we got two more videos we got to get through check out this next one a lot of nuggets here check this one out having to change your approach what is it that you could do differently to make sure a guy lines up properly on third and ten well, again, I, I think there's some things that, as far as coaching is concerned, that, you know, there, there are certain ways to approach it. And, and maybe I need to change my approach. How so? Well, like I said, it's, it's something that I, I need to look at. And then going back to um, what Ben was asking about with Taylor, how do you, when you look at him, how do you see, like, he's still a young quarterback in terms yep. of starts. So yep. how do you how do you when you look at that is it tough to sometimes see is he hitting his ceiling or is this just part of the growth process? Well, to me, it's part of the growth because when you watch some of the things that happen in this game, you, you almost wish he might have stayed on a guy a little bit longer or he might have got off a guy a little bit sooner. And, and I think those are things that he would handle or he will handle when once he gets a little bit more experience. You know what I'm saying? Because again, going through your progression at a certain pace is dictated on what you're reading as you go through it. Uh, he might see something that happens just prior to the snap that might tell him, hey, I can stay on my number one a little bit longer. I might have to go from one to two a lot sooner. Thank you. So we discussed a few weeks ago that it is what it is at quarterback right now. And that is essentially what Ron is saying. I truly believe that even if Kyle Allen was in the game, Kyle Allen is not going to save us. And here's a way to know why. Watch what they do. Watch what they do. That's what Rich Taylor always said. Kyle Allen is still the backup. That means 
Cal Allen is not going to get you much further than where Taylor is getting this team right now. You have to just deal with it is exactly what Ron is saying. Taylor, they got Taylor up out of class, everybody. Taylor was in class. Seriously, on the on the campus of Old Dominion University. Check in if you know where ODU is. I know exactly where ODU is because it's not too far from Hampton University, my alma mater, one of my alma mater. So I know where ODU is, okay? So he was in class. He was there. Cannot expect that much from Taylor. And it is what it is. I know that's not the answer that anybody wants to hear. But at this time, who else can they get? Yes, we all know they can call Cam. They can, they can probably call Robert Griffin III, too. But guess what? They're not going to. So this is what it is right now. And it's a growth period. It's a, it, that's where it is. That's where we are. So this, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, and these are things, again, going back to Mazdaq's point that we've been saying for weeks. This is what we see. This is what it is. And once we all know this, once teams start getting film on you, they're going to shut all of, they're going to shut your, your safety, your safety nets down. They're going to shut your security blanket down. Terry McLaurin, Terry, Terry is amazing, but they're going to start doubling and all and tripling Terry. They, they really are. And even with that, Taylor's just missing people. And that is exactly what we are witnessing yesterday. So many missed opportunities throughout the game. We, that, that's, now been, that's now what we're consistently seeing every week on offense. I do want to mention this as well. Antonio Gibson came out of the game, went into the medical tent. Then he went back into the game. Then they took him out of the game as well, again, for precautionary measures with dealing with his shin injury. Antonio did get an MRI. They're awaiting the results to share what, you know, if he's well or not. What I did want to mention from, from a... Um, an Antonio Gibson perspective is that fumble again with, with Antonio. I have shared this with, you know, you all many times. Antonio makes me so nervous with his handling of the football. I'm going to go back to film. If you are watching the film at this point, Antonio, everybody knows that that is how you handle the football. Everyone knows that so they're going to hit you exactly in the right spot to get that football out of your hands. I even know he's carrying a cuff in his right arm. Punch it out. Got to handle the football better. Has to hold the football better because now teams are on to him. And, 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 it, it makes me nervous every single time. Now, defense missed tackles. OMG. Now, we've been talking about missed tackles for a long time. I remember having a whole conversation with you all about the fundamentals of football and missed tackles and how it's the small things. Get the small things right. The handling of the football, making the tackle catching the football. These are fundamentals. These are football things that you learn in Little League that should continue and you would hope continue to mature and enhance as you continue on with your career. Not seeing that, especially on the tackle situation. Going to play this next video on a question that J.P. Finlay specifically asked about the missed tackles. Sides of the football, missed tackling has been a problem. Is that something you can address? Like, how do you try to improve that in season now? Well, you have to find other ways to be creative, to create opportunities to practice tackling. You know, it's, it's one of the hard things that, that you don't get the opportunity to really do. Um, and the last couple of weeks, because of the injuries we've sustained, we've had to slow practices down. And we've actually had to cut some of the periods and create a little bit more walkthroughs so we can get more guys participating when you had the number of injuries we've had to deal with. Um, 
And so we didn't practice in pads on Wednesday uh, because we just didn't have enough guys to be able to participate. And the way to get them involved is really to slow down the tempo of practice. So I had already heard that last Wednesday's practice was about an hour long. I was a little disturbed by that going into such a big week that last week was with week six in, in, in the Kansas city chiefs. I mean, that I think that was a true answer. I think it was an authentic answer, but it also shares with everyone they're not practicing. If, you, if you're not able to get in pads, you're not able to practice at the long-term pace. An hour is nothing. That's not a long practice. That's not much of anything getting done. If you're able to do that, or that's all you're able to do, then the team is already at a deficit. It is obvious they're not tackling in practice. Now, what I will say is I still feel like you should be tackling. Somebody's got to get tackled. Now, here's what I can't figure out. This is so interesting because this tackling bit has been a theme now amongst different coaches. And I do remember at one point in time, there was complaints about practice being too hard, about it being too rough, and players being concerned that they were going to get injured in practice. I am not saying that that's what anybody is saying is what happening. But what I am saying is that some of this is now becoming a theme with different coaching staffs. And it's a little strange to me. Just wanted to throw that out there because this is not the first time that we've heard this. And it's like, well, why not? Is there a concern about being injured? So the practices are practices are a little light something to think about something to keep your eyes on because yes ron your approach absolutely needs to change and we appreciate you saying that out loud because you're right glad you know it you know it because knowing is half the battle and being open and honest and transparent about where you need to change is where it all gets started and where you can start the improvements. Listen, big week this weekend, Lambeau Field, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers. Couple other observations that I wanted to share from the immediately after the game pressers. I love that Cole Holcomb shared that he has gotten rid of all his social media during the season because he does not deal with any distractions. I think that is smart and I think that is the right thing to do. I'm proud of Cole and I hope that others follow suit because that is absolutely the right, that, that's the right thing to do, to keep the noise down. He was very open and honest with saying, hey, I don't know what, I don't know what you all are talking about because all of my social media is deleted during the season. Smart. Um, there was also the theme of, heard this from Ricky Seals-Jones, Terry McLaurin, Chase Young, Cole Holcomb, Taylor Heineke. All five of those players shared about the brotherhood. Yes, they're frustrated, they're upset, but they are still with the brotherhood mentality. They're, they're going to stick together. They love each other. So let's see Let's see where it goes. Whew. But, but Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't play fair to anybody. No, and he shouldn't. The opposing team, you should never play fair. You should always do your best to carve up anybody's defense when you are a stellar, elite offense and quarterback. So, hey, I don't know you all, but we will talk about this again, and we'll see what happens this weekend, won't we? You all, thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. We're going to keep our eyes and our ears open, you all, okay? I will see you all soon.
you are not on the field. Yeah. Or, or ice. You are on the couch. To DC. This is Coaching from the Couch with your host, C. Wall. Delivering coverage for yes. all DC sports teams from the hometown yes. perspective. Nats, Skins, Mystics, DC United, Washington Wizards, Caps. State. My name's C4 and I'm a PG girl Down for my skins, I don't know if you heard If you like watching sports, then I am your girl Sit down on the couch if you're not on the field Cold on the ice, pick any sport that you want Know that I cover it tight, what would you like? From baseball to football and more Then this can go on the whole night Big shouts out to my HBCU fam Never forget who I am Through the wins and the losses, the highs and the lows We gotta stay strong so I stay ten toes Make the competition Back, back, the way I kick it make them mad, man. See all that we live and direct. Sit back on the couch and relax. Come on.